Hi, uh, my name is Ashpreet. Today we're going to learn something very interesting. Guys, uh, ever imagined your life like when you're speaking some sentences and they really don't make any sense to anyone? How would it feel like? Like people communicating with one another using their native language. But of course, when it's not going to make any sense to anyone, how, are, how can we say that we're actually communicating with one another? You know, uh, so when you talk about English, and especially when we talk in English, it's very important that we actually convey the correct meaning to the person concerned, right? So more or less, at time, it does happen that even native English speakers, they try to use these words and probably interchange these words with one another. But of course, they meet some sentence as the person gets to know some idea or has some idea as to what the person is trying to convey. But just to make sure that you rightly convey the right message to the right person at the right time, it's very important to play and place these words at the right position. So yes, as of now, you might have got some idea as to what I'm talking all about. Now we're going to focus on the very important topic in English, that's prepositions. So let's try prepositions by, you know, talking about some simple examples, taking some simple examples. So let's say I have a few sets of sentences which do not make any sense. How about, you know, I say, he sat the car. Or maybe let's try another case. There is some milk. The fridge, you know, I am trying to communicate with you, but of course I am trying to convey my message, but somewhere down the line you feel that there's some disconnect or you're not able to connect just because I am unable to frame a proper sentence. Let's take the third example. She was hiding the table. Does it make any sense when I say she was hiding the table? Of course not. Not even to the any, not even to any remote person living in any place on earth, it would sound to make any sense to that person. Let's take another example. The cat jumped the counter. You know, I am trying to convey, but somewhere down the line, it's not reaching, right? He drove the bridge. Of course, there's some connection I'm trying to make when I talk about bridge or maybe his driving skills. But you're not getting the way I am trying to convey what I am trying to convey. He lost or she lost her ring, the beach. So you might be wondering as to what she's trying to convey. So let's look into the very definition of what important role does these miniature words play in our day to day life. These words, they're called preposition. So basically a preposition is a word that links either it's a noun a pronoun or a noun phrase to some other part of the sentence, right? So this is basically how we get to know the time, the direction, the place, the location of anything important that we are talking about. When we talk in English, we have a set of words as far as prepositions are concerned. We can talk as why do we need prepositions? So or what is preposition? Why do we need them? Why do we use them? So basically, a preposition is, of course, a word, or you can say there's a set of words that indicates, I just told you, it indicates the location. Let's say I talk, I am in the car. Of course, when people say, or might be saying that I'm on the car, I am in the car, I'm onto the car, but where am I exactly? When I talk about my location, basically, I need to put things right in position as to define what preposition I'm supposed to use, and then I'm going to set things right. For example, in relation to other, you know, when I talk about some other relationships between a noun, pronoun, or maybe other parts of a sentence, for example, about, after, besides, instead of, in accordance, so these are the basic sets where probably I use preposition or how important prepositions are, right? So it's it's very difficult to state as to which preposition suits the best in a sentence. Of course, the prepositions can be interchangeable. 
there are some gray areas where we can use a set of word and probably convey the same meaning to the other person. We'll, we'll just look into it and the lecture coming forward. So, but, you know, the best way to learn these prepositions is like you learn it in chunk of words. For example, I say uh, like in the morning, right, at night. So basically when you concentrate on these chunk of words, you come to know as to which preposition suits the best at that part, part of the time or that sentence. So we just covered, we just looked into certain examples. For example, he, he sat the chair. You told me that ma'am, it's not making any sense to us. So how about I say, uh, we talk about he sat on the chair. Of course, you get to know about the exact position, right? Then we are going to frame the second sentence. There is some milk. Of course, where is the milk? It's in the fridge, right? Again, we get to know the position, right? So even for position, we use different prepositions. Just now you saw we used on. Whereas I'm also using the, you know, the preposition in when I talk about, again, the position of something. She was hiding under the table. Again, you might be thinking she's again talking about the position of a person, but using a different preposition, right? The cat jumped off the counter. Or maybe I talk about he drove over the bridge, not above the bridge. I've not used on top of the bridge. We get to know as to where the right preposition fits in. Again, we, when I talk about she lost her ring at the bridge, that means when I talk about the place, when I'm talking about the place of anything, or I, mark, I need to mark a specific location as to what I am talking about, we basically use the preposition that's at. So let's look into the lecture as to what preposition we are going to focus on. Since there is a set of prepositions which cannot be covered in one single lecture, so we are going to look into some examples and learn something new now. That's let's try these preposition. I'm going to focus on above, over, on and on top of. So basically I'll start with these four prepositions. That's above, over, on and on top of. Right. So basically do you find something that's common in them? Think about it guys. Like, let me know what do you think about it. When I talk about above, over, on, or maybe I speak the word on top of, what, do you, what comes to your mind? What's the, of course, yes, you, you might be talking that she's talking about something that's higher in position, that's above something, that's on the position that's actually higher position, right? So basically keeping that in mind, I've segregated some prepositions that we talk about or we you know, commonly use and we make a lot of mistakes while using these prepositions. So let's jump into the lecture and see what's new. I've done a very, very taken a very easy peasy example. Let's take the example of preposition start with it. Uh, or we'll start with over, right? So you can see that there is a movement associated with these objects, maybe a ball, maybe a cow, but actually I've tried to portray that both of them, they are in motion. So when I talk about over, something that must click your mind is basically she's trying to state that there is a movement associated with a thing, with a, with a, with a, with a probably a stuff that she's talking about, but it is above, of course, it's, it's something that's above, but that is in movement. Then there comes a special preposition that I use that's over. Now let's see where else can I use the preposition over. Just now you told me that ma'am, when we talk about the movement of something, for example, you, you just saw the two images, right? So basically, even when I say the birds, they moved over the city, guys. We never use the word the birds move above the city, right? So basically they were in movement, so they didn't stay right there. Right. So they just came, they moved above. So they moved over and they got away. Right. So basically I'm talking about movement. So I'm using the preposition that's over. So that's not the limit. Of course, I use uh, the preposition over at other places also. For example, I have to, you know, make an ar make arrangements about a party and, you know, have an estimate of how many people am I going to have 
there in the party or maybe i'm going to plan a wedding ceremony or something of that sort and of course i am the one concerned authority who has to make arrangements and you know calculate about the number of people who will be attending right so whenever i talk or make an estimate about numbers when i play with numbers i use the preposition that's over right for example i say there are over 100 people in the party so i have when i talk about numbers of course again i'm going to use the preposition over you also talked about the preposition over when you were trying to tell me that we are in movement but above something higher in position you use the preposition over when i talk about numbers you told me that ma'am we again use the preposition that is over something that's left i say you are yawning but i suggest you or recommend you you know just to cover your head or you know you cover your head not your head sorry cover your mouth when you are yawning so i probably say put your hand over your mouth when you yawn right so basically when you yawn when you cough people suggest you to cover your mouth so basically when you need to cover something you again use the preposition over so basically that's something very new right we try to interchange the preposition over and above but when you try to keep in mind these three things that we use the preposition over when we talk about the movement we use the preposition over when we talk about numbers and we use the preposition over when we talk about something that needs to be covered right let's look into the lecture further as to where else can be used over for example there's a person humpty dumpty person and he is quite uh, you know overweight right you can see but he's still very happy about the fact you can see it right in the image so i use over as a prefix right to you know estimate as to what uh, the person is weighing i basically weigh he is overweight i am not sure as to what is his weight or how much uh, a pound does he weigh but of course when i you know make an estimate or maybe talk to a second person about the third person i'll probably say he is overweight or maybe he drive he there's a word when you write basically when you write use the word right you again use you can use the prefix that's the preposition over so we have four more ex, more important cases when we use the preposition over the very first you told me it's with movement the second one let me see if you remember was the fourth example where you can a uh, fourth case where you can use the word preposition over what do you think guys let me see how many of you actually understood that where can we use the preposition over the very first case with movement second case first yes it's with numbers second uh, third case when you talk about covering something and the fourth case is when you use it as a prefix again we use the uh, the the preposition that's over now let's proceed and see what's what is the difference when i talk about above and over you can see right in the image there's a ball above the box there are books that are placed above the shelves right or maybe there's just a single shelf in the picture i can say the books are above the shelf that means there's no movement associated right the the things they are in the same plane probably if you look into the image you'll get to know when i talk about this preposition above basically i am referring to something that's almost in the same plane same horizon right unlike something when i was talking about over you were basically not in the same plane guys you were in movement right so that's the basic difference when i talk about above and over let me see how can you say that i am using the word above for example i can use this preposition above when it's used to depict or place something that's physically in relationship with the other something that's higher in relation to something else i just told you that something that you are when you are in the same plane and or maybe something in the same line for example i say the sun is above the car that's a very good example to say that of course it's not in motion but yes somewhere down the line you see something that's probably in the same plane or you can see it in the same line 
then you use the preposition that's above or maybe something when it, when there's a, a higher than a reference point for example uh, uh, when you come back from your exam and uh, your mother asks you uh, you know what's your score you probably say it's above average you don't wish to tell her what's your score but if you say okay i performed pretty well but not so good exceptionally well it was not exceptionally well so you can probably say that i was above average right or maybe uh, it was above your expectation so you were not expecting something you were expecting a score maybe somewhere near to zero or going in negative so i probably was in a position to you know make sure that it was the result is going to be above your expectation and i'm going to stand above average so i have a very good question for you let me see if you can answer this question i have a set of two i have uh, two sentences with me and you have to state which of the two is correct the very first sentence is it was 3 degrees above zero and the second sentence is it was 3 degrees over zero now what do you think is the correct answer think about it and try to answer this question as to which do you think is the right statement right makes sense as because you already understood where can we use the preposition above and where can we use the preposition over you studied two cases when it comes to the preposition above and you studied four cases when we talk about the preposition over Now let me see if you can answer this question. Of course, yes, you guys are absolutely correct while answering this question. The perfect answer to this question is first part that is the first statement is correct because it was the right statement is it was 3 degrees above zero. And can you answer guys why is it that we um, we chose above and not over? Yes, of course. so when we talk about temperature and it's in reference to then of course we have to use the word above right so it is in relation to zero or maybe the average component so of course we have supposed to use the preposition above and not over that's very good you you're getting the things i must say all right so i have this question again for you why what do you think is the correct answer Uh, let me see if you've understood. The very first statement is, "I get over sixty emails a day." Does it make sense to you, or would it be right if I stated like, "I get above sixty emails a day"? What do you think is the right statement? Is it the first part that I get over sixty emails a day, or is it the second part I get above sixty emails a day? let me see how many of you can answer and correct the statement and which is as to which is the correct statement okay so most of you are saying that this makes some sense and the second one does not make any sense okay let's try the second let me i'll just tell you if you are correct or not the second case is if you weigh over 100 kg then you may need to start a diet of course everybody tries to give you a good advice so basically it means that if you are uh, if you weigh above 100 kg then you may need to start a diet that's the first statement and you have to choose out of the two and where the second statement is if you weigh above 100 kg then you may need to start a diet i'll give you a minute to think on it and choose which of the two statements actually make or one statement makes sense think about it let me see if you can answer which statement makes more sense and you think is it's more appropriate to use that statement okay so i'll see if you answered it right so the first question is we normally use over not above with numbers so all of you have already answered that with numbers you are supposed to use over so basically what you chose was absolutely correct okay so what about the second statement you have to answer this one also if you weigh 
over 100 kilograms, then you may need to start a diet. Again, I'm talking about numbers. So what do you think? Is this the correct statement or is this the correct statement, guys? What do you think is the correct statement? Okay, so most of you are telling me that this makes more sense, that this first statement makes more sense. So let's see and look into the answer as to which statement makes more sense. Of course, it's the very first statement that is, if you weigh over 100 kilograms, then you may need to start a diet. That's absolutely correct. So basically, you're getting the difference as to where can we use the preposition above and where are we supposed to use the preposition over. Okay, so let's proceed and see if you can probably make sense. Uh, we've already answered that it's over 100 people. Uh, what, what do you think, guys? Over 100 people complained about the program or should it be above 100 people who complained about the program? Okay, yes, absolutely correct. It's over 100 people and you already know the answer. We use over with numbers and basically we do not use above or prefer to use above when we talk about numbers. So you're doing great. Absolutely correct. That absolutely makes some sense. Okay. So I have a simple question for you. Should I proceed? Are you getting the stuff? Okay. So congratulations. Since you're telling me you're getting the stuff, that means probably we can proceed. Okay. So let's proceed and, you know, take up the next task. Okay. So just tie up your seat belt. It's going to be, uh, you, you're going to link it up, right? Of course, let's start. Okay. So basically, when I talk about on or when I talk about on top of, here I have these two prepositions. So basically, you talk about on, that means there's a plane surface, right? And then there's a reference point, there's a plane horizontal surface or any surface for that matter. Basically, you're taking into consideration a surface, right? And when you talk about, talk about a surface, you say it is on the table. The book is on the paper, right? So, for example, I have written a few examples. Let's say the surface can be like this. It may be horizontal or it may be a vertical surface for that matter. Let's look into this look into some examples. For example, I say surface of something is where I use on. For example, the book is on the table, right? The, uh, the, the, the painting or the map is on the blackboard, right? Uh, the pen is, on, I, I have my hand on the page, right? The painting is on the wall. So basically you have a surface that is supporting the object that you are referring to, right? The pot is on the roof, again, right? Mark it on a map. So mark your location on a map, right? So of course you have a surface. It may be a horizontal or a vertical surface and you are trying to, you know, refer it, uh, refer your position with respect to that surface then you use the preposition on. But when I say I have on something, for example, I have a flat surface, I have a pen on this hand, on my hand, but if I have another thing on top of it, so basically I'm using the preposition on, on. So I am, instead of using on, on twice, I would probably prefer to use a preposition that's on top of. Right. So I have a tongue that's on and again on. So basically, in order to refer and, you know, stop or avoid that confusion, I use the preposition that's called on top of. Let's look into some examples. For example, uh, I talk about on and on top of. So we, we got to use it in reference to one another. So basically, I told you I generally have a reference of a surface when I talk about the preposition on or on top of. Right. So basically, when I talk of on, I have something that's touching. Right. So look into the picture very carefully. You'll come to know where can I use on and as to where can I use on top of. Right. OK. Now, there's a staple on the top, on top of the church. Right. So I have used the preposition on here and whereas I have used the preposition on top of here. If you look carefully into these two sentences, you'll get to know the difference. 
For example, I say a cross is on top of this table. So basically, I have something that's on the church. And on top of it, again, I have a cross. So basically, I am referring to something that's on and on. So there I use a preposition that's called on top of. Right? I hope I've made my point clear. Does it make sense? Okay. So I proceed further and I see how can you differentiate. For example, I have ice cream. I have a person who is doing, uh, you know, who's into river and using his surfboard into enjoying his day. So let's say, uh, can I say just because there's water and the person is, you know, surfing on the surface of that water. So basically he's on and on top of something, right? So there I'm supposed to use a preposition that's on top of. Again, I have some ice cream on the cone but over it i have some nuts and chocolate on top of those that ice cream so of course i'm supposed to use guys what do you think i'm supposed to use am i supposed to use the preposition on or am i supposed to use the preposition on top of which makes more sense to you on or on top of of course, on top of. So let's read these two sentences since it's clear into your in your head. The very first sentence is a surfer rides his surfboat on top of water. Absolutely correct. That means on top of. That means something on and again on it. The second example is the nuts and chocolate on top of the ice cream taste really good. Of course, I'm sure you all might be loving something like that. But we use on top of it, right? But you can see this pretty little kitten. You can see it is on the suitcase, guys. It's like on the suitcase, right? So uh, you can say when I refer to something that's chair, when I am referring to a chair, I don't say I, I sat on top of a chair. You basically state that I sat or he sat on the chair. So basically that's the difference when you talk about the preposition on and when you talk or take into the consider take into consideration the preposition that's on top of let's look uh, into some examples as to when we can interchange these prepositions as i told you there's no set rule when we use prepositions but we really need to be careful when you are using these prepositions right different prepositions of course they can be used with different sentences I, I uh, we, we never say that there's this pitch criteria, but of course it tries we it it conveys a different messages when it comes message when it comes to you know what the person is trying to interpret out of it. You can use different prepositions. For example, they can be used interchangeably. Uh, they more or less make the same meaning or convey the same meaning. But of course, there's a slight difference at times when we use these prepositions. Now, when can we interchange these prepositions that we've just talked about? Let's look into the first case. Let's hang the picture over, or you can say above the fireplace. Both of them, they make sense and are absolutely correct. The sentence is absolutely correct when you say, let's hang the picture over the fireplace. That's also absolutely correct. But when you use the preposition, let's Hang the picture above the fireplace that also conveys the same, more or less the same meaning, right? Second example. Can you please put a blanket over my legs? That also is absolutely correct to state that you're using a preposition over, right? But when I state it, can you please put a blanket on my legs that we generally use, uh, how we generally use this preposition on, that's also absolutely correct. And I guess it makes absolute sense. The third case where we can interchange prepositions, the third example is, on top of all my other problems, I have a new boss to be, right? So basically, either you can use on, or you can use the uh, preposition on top of all of my other problems, I have a new boss to deal with. So basically, you're trying to convey a meaning, convey your message using the right prepositions. It makes 
more uh, appropriate to use the right preposition and convey your meaning, right? So let's look into some other examples of prepositions. Basically, I am using the preposition now that's in, on, at, and by. So now we're going to talk about these four prepositions, one of which you've already covered. Now, if you look into the picture very carefully, you get some idea as to where am I supposed to use the preposition in, where am I supposed to use the preposition on, I just told you, you can have a horizontal surface when you talk about on, there's this reference point, or you can have probably a vertical surface when you talk about the preposition on. So basically it's on, or maybe it's, uh, you know, something that's in reference to a surface. So there you are very clear up in your head that you can use the preposition on. But when I talk about the preposition in that we are going to focus on, I am basically, you know, just look into some examples before I jump into this prepositions on, at, in. I generally say I am at home. I talk, when I talk about my work, or my location, I say I am at work. I am at school. Or maybe I am at university. At college. I am at the top, right? I am at the bottom. I am at the side of the road. I am at the reception. So these are some common cases or example where I use the preposition to set my location, right? So these three prepositions, set of these three prepositions, of course, they are used when I talk about my location. You have or, uh, so you have at, you have in, you have on. For example, I am confined in four walls, right? I'm talking about my location, but I'm referring to my location when I am surrounded by something. There may be four walls, or more or less, I have some enclosed area for my reference in order to refer my position. I say, in a car, basically, I have a closed surface uh, or a closed area. In a car, in a taxi, in a helicopter, in a boat, because I have that closed area, right? Something to refer. In a lift or an elevator, in the newspaper, of course, that's not an enclosed surface, but I'll tell you where else can you use this preposition in. I'm in the sky. I'm in a row. I am in Oxford Street. It's like jump into this preposition in as to where can I use the preposition in. But of course, before I talk about the preposition in, that's again talking about my location. Can you say when I talk about at, you something, uh, think about some place. I might be at this place. I might be at school. I might be at home. So you can rightly look into the images. That's very images I have put in. Like I am at work. I am at school and I am at home. These are the three examples of my, that tell or maybe speak a lot about my location. And when I talk about my location, I am supposed to use the preposition at. So where do I use this preposition in? For example, let's say uh, I have uh, a set of sentences. What do you think makes more sense? The school is at Bay Street or does it make more sense if I say the school is on Bay Street? So you told me you have a reference point, you have to refer to some place, then I use the sentence uh, or use the preposition on. But when I say I am at a particular location, I want to say that I am here or maybe at this location or maybe they are at this position, then of course I'm supposed to use the preposition that's at. So let's look into the example. The very first sentence is, they live in 12 Bay Road. Or does it make more sense if I say, uh, maybe state it this way, they live at 12 Bay Road. So basically at makes more sense because I am trying to refer to their location. So these are two examples. We look deeply into this context as to where 
can and where do where do these prepositions fit well let's start with it you can see these keys right you can probably see the keys they're placed in my pocket so basically i have an enclosed area right so when i talk something that's inside or maybe within the edges of something or maybe it can be a container or maybe uh, some enclosed spaces i generally use the preposition in i when i need to tell a person about my location but i am sure that uh, that i have this enclosed area or maybe when i want to tell that what's there in a mug or in a cup that i am having it in my hand i use the preposition in so let's look into certain examples for example i've got the key in my pocket right it's not on my pocket it's not above my pocket of course since it is in it's enclosed area in a enclosed area there is it's, it's within the it's within my pocket so there comes this preposition that's in let's look into some other examples i told you you can use a preposition in when you have this enclosed area so there are few examples for example there's some milk in the fridge right so uh, or maybe there's some fruits and vegetables in the fridge right so or maybe uh, your food is lying in the fridge right or i have made chapatis that lying uh, in the hot case right okay but can i say this uh, the pen is in the drawer of course it is because you have that space that's enclosed and the pen is within that enclosed space there i use this uh, preposition that's it the very third example a very easy example that we commonly use is there's tea there's coffee in my cup or in my mug so basically i have this mug right and there's some tea i have this enclosed surface right and there's some tea and there's some coffee right in this mug so basically i am using the preposition in right in can also be used guys when we talk about buildings rooms they are more or less enclosed but even if i do not have some enclosed area or edges are more or less not clear even in that case i am supposed to use the preposition in for example let's talk about the areas regions or cities they do not have confined edges i cannot set of course on the map you have those edges but uh, when i talk in general you have no fixed edges about them even in that case i am supposed to use the preposition in for example can you take a seat in the waiting room please so i am you you know referring to a building or maybe talking about a particular room i am supposed to use the preposition in i grew up in chandigarh again i do not uh, well as far as chandigarh is concerned the edges are more or less not that clear this somewhat not clear but again i'm supposed to use the preposition in the third example is i am filming the lecture or you know delivering the lecture in delhi again there is this place there is this region that does not have more or less clear boundary but still i am using the preposition in to set my location and make things clear to the other person other cases where i can use in is when i uh, you know it can be used for group of people or maybe groups of people for example i say she works in the business team so basically i have group of people around me with whom i coordinate and work that means she is surrounded of course by people i am supposed to use the preposition in he got elected or he got selected to play in the state team so i am referring to the p this term team as i am referring to group of people right so i have this team or maybe group of people among whom i got selected so i use the preposition to set my location or to talk about myself and i generally state 
he got selected or I got selected in the state team. Now, in can also be used when I talk about liquids. We just saw the example. For example, the coffee is in the mug. This was a very easy example we generally use in when I, you know, talk about something that's enclosed or within the particular area. But when I say with liquids, what do I mean? Careful, there's a lot of chili in that sauce. So basically, sauce is a liquid. And I need to tell you something about sauce that's in the sauce, that's right in, in it. So I use the preposition in. Let's say I have to convey the message, the person who's made tea or coffee, that there is a lot of sugar that you've added. So I'll probably say, uh, does it make sense to say there's a lot of tea, a, a lot of sugar onto my coffee or should I use there's, a, there's too much of sugar in this coffee? Of course, you talk about liquids and you're supposed to use, of course, very good. That means you're talking about coffee and you're talking about there's this liquid and you have to tell something about it. So use the preposition in. So there's a lot of sugar in this coffee. So third question. Do you like milk in your coffee? So when I talk about milk or maybe do you, again a liquid, I use the preposition in with it. So let's see uh, where there's this exception to this rule. Uh, so generally when there are elections, and I need to tell you something uh, about uh so let's let's look into it. So there's this exception to this rule where I can I do not use the preposition in. Where people they are elected, right? For example, I use the word in. But when there's no elections, for example, I say he's on the board. Of course, when I have a board, there are a group of people, right? So when I say he's on the board, I basically refer to that there's a group of people, there are a group of people who actually surround me or with whom I associate and probably work with, but of course I am not using the preposition in. The second exception is they are on the committee, right? So basically when I talk about the people who are, uh, you know, in a group, right? Uh, there is a time when I use the preposition in, but at times I do not use the preposition in and I prefer to use the preposition on instead. Let's quickly look into the example where can I use the preposition at. For example, when I talk about some specific places or points in space, more or less it's like uh, you have to tell your location to some person or someone who's on call with you. So you'll say, I'm still at school. Or you, you'll just tell me that just I'll meet you at the airport. So basically, when you talk about your position, your location, right, then you use the preposition at. Where else can I use the preposition at? At is also used for public places or maybe it's also used for shops. For example, I say I started design at school. So basically, I am trying to talk about some institution. There's a place, there's some location. So, of course, I use the preposition at, right? Or I say I started uh, uh, or, you know, at I use that uh, the preposition at when I talk about my address. For example, I live at 18 Park Road. I had a coffee at Zara's house. So, of course, when you talk about some address or you talk about some public places, or you talk about your location, you use the preposition at. So guys, these were some basic examples, some basic case studies. For example, even when you are some at some event, we generally say, I met him at a party, right? So you can use at when you talk about events, you can use at when you talk about some public places, or maybe talk uh, use at when you talk about your, you know, you, you're supposed to give your reference with respect to your address or something. So these are some basic things you should probably know before you jump into this vast ocean of words that's called prepositions. 
there are some prepositions as i said which can be changed or you know interchanged with one another but of course they try to convey a different meaning right so it's very important to use the right preposition at the right time in right order of sentence to convey a very meaningful message so let's look at some gray areas for example i just told you uh, sometimes there's some problem but of course you can interchange them let's look into two examples i generally say it's on the corner but of course it conveys the same meaning when i say it's at the corner right i say the museum is on the south side of the city or maybe i say your seat is on the right side right so these are some of the examples where prepositions can be used or can be interchanged and they convey the same meaning more or less the same meaning for example there's a little confusion or a little trick when it comes to uh, you know talking about my position in a car or maybe in a train i say i am in a car but when i talk about a bus or maybe a train i generally refer and use the preposition on that means i say i am on the bus or i am on the train so guys this has been a very wonderful journey with you guys thank you so much for being so kind and generous if you have any doubts i would love to answer those doubts just in case you have any queries any doubt okay guys so i'll call off the lecture thank you so much for being so good all the very best see you soon